Welcome to this uh, POC overview for Sember and JSON schemas, how to use them together. So uh, here's the deal. Uh, most of the time when we deal with microservices or Internet of Things devices and things like that, that uh, you know, you don't have a full control or not an easy way to release new versions. Sometimes it's very hard, you know, when you have to send messages from one service or device to another and then you have to change the the contract because you evolve the contract into something else but you don't you are not very sure if the device that is going to digest this message later on is 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 aware of these changes right because it's hard sometimes to propagate the changes on the on the library so uh let me show you what i have been using in the past to overcome uh, um, to solve this uh, this challenge so basically the idea is uh, first of all you want to use json schemas because it's going to provide you a unified way like a contract uh, to understand what uh, should be part of the message you know what what can be included what cannot be included what is the type of the information that should be there you know so for example let's say that i have a, a message which the payload is expecting to have an id you know what what kind of id what's the shape is a string is a number is a numerical there are other restrictions what's going to happen what about the email you know what kind of format i expect or you know any other kind of uh, information associated so i have booleans or i have numbers what kind of numbers you know all of that so first of all json schemas uh, allow, allow us to to have this uh, clear mindset and if you are using sember also you have the possibility as, as you are using semantic versioning to understand, you know, if you are capable or not to digest that message and you can have also some kind of compatibility across them. So what's the idea at the end, right? So uh, first of all, I want to define the contracts, you know, my schemas um, and to have some properties already in all the schemas, you know, like the shape of the schema. So one of them is like, I want to have the version of the schema. So the version of the contract, right? So you basically define, you know, um, which version is this a schema made of you know so it's like a contract so you have the version of the contract the next thing is you have something called a schema compatibility which says like well for this version 2.7 of the contract i'm able to process messages that are from the same 2.x versions or 1.7 ahead and 2.x versions and so on you know so it's easy to understand and the second thing and the most important is in each message you will include the schema version right so when you have a lot of contracts that are basically a plain JSON files, right? You can collect them and group them and export them in a way that is easy for other services or uh, applications to consume them. You know, so basically you build a library. So the library basically just read those schemas, uh, those schemas and export them. You know, so it's easy. Any programming language that support the capabilities of reading a file and exporting a file content should be enough so you are easily extend this to another languages so the thing is when when you produce the message right you has included this library on your source code right as a dependency so first thing is when you want to use a build this message you are going to use you are going to attach the version of the contract that you use to build the message right how do you attach the version? You attach that as a schema version inside of the message. You see these three dots is like all the rest of the properties that you want to use, you know, like the IDs, the, you know, contract ID that I made reference of and all those kind of things. And when you are going to consume the message, right, in the other side of the chain, basically you are going to have the same library, right? But but you are not very sure which version of the library you have, right? So that's why you have something called a schema compatibility, right? So you will check the schema version, the version that the message belong to against the schema compatibility that you have. So you know if you can process or not the message. That's the funny thing here, you know. So even before you start processing the message, you know if you are going to be able to understand it or not, you know, just by checking if I am compatible with that version. And the funny thing also is, as you have an schema uh, fully functional also, you can take the message that arrive and just check it against the schema. So you don't have to do a lot of, um, you know, conditional combination checks and all of that, because, you know, if you are following the schema, you are going to be valid on the analysis of the schema. So that is easy and simplified a lot, the, you know, the concerns about, you know, the external sources that are sending me data. So it's easy. Um, how we can, you know, go on a step forward with this. So the funny thing is if you have a contract, right, you use JSON schemas and you use already semantic versioning, 
on the definitions, why not go an additional step and add some testing, you know? And that way also, uh, if you have good tests, you will know beforehand if you are, you know, breaking compatibility with other versions and it's going to be easier for you to know when you are doing a major change, a minor change and all of that. So basically, uh, what I have done here is, uh, let me show you just a um, simple schema. So let's see, for example, here they have an, uh, a schema, right? This is a contract, as I said before, right? So basically, every contract has the same shape. Uh, doesn't matter. So let me show you here. You have uh, one for creation and one for deletion. So let me show you that uh, two different things. So first of all, they are very common. You know, they have the same shape. So you have a version, which is the version of the contract. Then you have the schema compatibility, you know, to which kind of messages I can understand from this. So you have the schema compatibility and then you have a name of the schema. So that will help you also later on to understand a little bit what kind of messages or structure that you're dealing with. And then you have the schema. The schema, the in general line you have in common uh, two things, you know, uh, the schema version and additionally, normally I also include the timestamp just to know, you know, for sure from when this message uh, was crafted or so on, but yeah, I put it as an additional, as an optional feature in some cases. So yeah, basically the schema version is telling me like which was the version of the contract that I used it when I crafted the message. And then you can use the schema compatibility when you want to understand this. So basically that's the idea. And additional to that, you can add all the details that you want, all the properties, you know, what actually you want to send in the message. So you have the ID, the age, the email, and so on, right? Um, in terms of testing, how you can, you know, uh, evolve this and make sure that it's working. So first of all, let me show you what is a general test. So general test, basically I, uh, well, first of all, let me show you how you export it. So you have the JSON schemas, you import them, and then you find a way to export them. That's the that's idea. So if you can build this same exportation using Rust, you can do it with Golang, you can do it with the C++. You know, the idea here is um, you, you can have a common interface, right? Uh, just to find a way to export it. Um, and also you don't have to do the test for each language, you know, because you do test against the, the schema. So also it's easy because you actually, in terms of the library, like which of the version of the whole library is based on this exportation file. So if you change this shape, obviously this can be a semantic version change that can be, you know, major, minor or so on. But if you are only changing the... Uh, if you are only changing the JSON schemas, you are doing just patching, you know, because basically each schema itself has their own semantic version it on it, so you don't have to worry. So in terms of the library, it's super easy, and um, you don't have to do a lot of calculations, you know, like, oh, well, I changed the deleted uh, deleted schema or so on, so how, what, what I'm supposed to do here, right? Um, so yeah, that sometimes can be hard to determine, but here you don't because you split that concern. You know, you have one semantic version for the library itself, and then you have semantic version per each contract, each kind of uh, JSON schema that you have. Um, so yeah, basically that's how I craft the library. And then when you consume the library, in terms of testing, basically, first of all, I want to check, you know, that each message that I have in the library have a valid schema, right? Those properties that has a valid and is assembler compatible, you know, the version and it has, you know, the schema compatibility, this definition and it's uh, valid, you know, so that's the idea. But the funny thing is when you move, for example, to test the schemas specifically for the users, you can uh, test it against realistic payload, you know, so you can craft your own fixtures. And inside of your fixtures, for example, you can check, you know, what happened when I send you the minimal properties or all the properties for the message, all those kind of things. So you can have a specific test for that. And it's very easy to see when you are breaking the contract, you know, against your old fixtures or you create a new fixture with new features and if that's a uh, create or not a problem with the contract. So it's easy uh, to track. It's easy to understand. And it's a very good, you know, in terms of engineering having this kind of uh, contract, you know, because even if you are not yet crafting uh, the things, you have the agreement already on how I'm going to publish the message, what they are going to contain and how we are going to consume it later. So it's easier for anyone to understand it and it will drive a lot of agreement on in terms of engineering, you know, and it's very easy because this also is agnostic to the programming language that you use, you know, at the end you are going to use uh, JSON schemas. So basically uh, it's easy, it's a definition, you know, it's a definition language. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of easier. I hope you find it useful. Have a nice day.